okay, so my name is Godfrey Nolan. Um, I run a company called Reese LLC, uh, which is based out of Troy, Michigan, just outside Detroit. And um, I have a little story to tell. So um, I had a, we get interns a lot, we bring them in. I teach at a bunch of different universities um, as an adjunct trying to get interns. And uh, one of the problems, I had an intern this year who really couldn't figure out how to get a lot done with the simulators in um, PX4. And uh, I knew he was pretty bright because he'd already been in my class in Android and he got through that. So um, I thought something else might be going on. So uh, this is kind of an answer to Ramon's request to, you can't get in that way. So this is a, an answer to Ramon's request to kind of go back to basics. So this is a fairly introductory talk. And I'm basically going to run through all the things that this guy couldn't figure out. Um, so just to warn you straight up that this is, you know, this is pretty simple. But what I'm trying to do is run through all of the different things to set up JMAPSIM, to set up Gazebo, to set up AirSim, and the kind of stuff that we found in the, uh, in the documentation that just didn't make any sense. I'm also going to go really um, low level, and this is low barrier to entry here. So basically, I did everything on Windows 11 with the WSL2, the Windows uh, subsystem library, um, which is great. It's uh, Ubuntu 2204. Uh, I didn't really have any issues with it. Um, it's just like running any other VM. And I think with Windows 11, it's kind of finally uh, mature enough that um, I, you, know, you don't have to install Linux if you're just not, if you're just not a type of person. Um, I also have a couple of Microsoft, or not Microsoft, uh, Mac stuff out there too. So I'm going to talk about why it matters, um, especially for myself. I'm going to talk about the different simulators, and then SITL and HITL, uh, software in the loop and hardware in the loop, um, the different setup, what options you have. And then, because what I'm trying to do is, uh, like we're a proper agile shop, mobile development, I want to make sure that everything's running in CI, CD, uh, continuous integration. So we want to, you know, the way that we develop is we write a bunch of unit tests, um, we write some espresso tests, and we want to make sure that uh, we keep doing that because if you run them in a Jenkins or some other continuous integration server, chances are you're going to catch all those weird edge cases that, um, you know, weird defects that happen because you've introduced, you, uh, you fixed a defect and then you've um, introduced another defect as, as a feature. So, okay, so let's go through. So why does it matter? Um, well, I, the main reason it matters is because I think it gets to the next slide, this is the main thing. So if I was going to develop for drones, and remember we're doing, the company that I work for, we do mobile apps for drones. We don't really do drones. We don't make drones. We're in the Mav SDK world. Um, we're also agnostic, so we're in um, the Parrot ground SDK world. We're in DJI mobile SDK and all the other stuff. And we're now in a situation, one of the major benefits that PX4 has over the other platforms is that you can do software in the loop. So you don't have to do this. So you don't have to have a drone that's hooked up to you know, a frame like this to fly around. We can test our Mav SDK applications all day long, and we can put them in Jenkins, and we can get them to run in our CIC server, um, and basically establish a rapid form of development, which is what we're trying to do. So we are contractors. If we're not faster than what their internal staff is, they just go back to their internal staff. So we have to prove our worth all the time. And one of the major ways that we do it is try to find uh, shortcuts. OK, so I'm going to focus on these, JMAPSIM, Gazebo, and AirSim. Um, like I said, what we're really trying to do is use JMAPSIM and PX4 as the basis for what we're trying to, uh, trying to test on, um, on our mobile app. In this case, it's Android, but it could be iOS. It doesn't really matter. There are two types. There's software in the loop and hardware in the loop. Um, if you look at the documentation that you'll see out there, it's kind of like this. So it's like, okay, well, this is, we have PX4 on SITL, so PX4 is running on our computer, and then we have a simulator, um, which is our JMAPSIN or Gazebo, whatever you want. Um, we don't use Q ground control. We're basically using the MAV SDK in, instead of Q ground control. <laughs> Although there are definitely way, times when we've done work on Q ground control where we have used this kind of arrangement. Um, I run a meetup, a drone meetup. I have the link at the end if anybody wants to partake. I did a dry run of this, and one of the um, feedback I got was, this diagram's too complicated, so what does that mean? So that's what that means. So simple as that. So for, um, and you don't actually need to have the hardware device running there. So you could basically have every, everything running in the 
on the laptop. Um, that's the, you know, the simplest way of setting up. And to be honest, that's for most of what we do because the applications, if you think we're kind of replacing QGround control, so we're building a, uh, an alternative GCS for different customers. Um, we have our own white label one that we have. That's, there's a link at the end to as well. Um, which is um, just kind of like a, a slimmed down version of what we're trying to do. Okay, so no, no hardware attached. Let's see if I can get this running. So in um, the Mav SDK, uh, if you go to Mav SDK, there's a couple of examples. So in Mav SDK, um, there's an Android client that's supposed to work with the server that's Mav SDK. So we basically just hijack that and um, pointed it at the PX4 and JMAPSIM, and I'll show you how to do that, um, which is, uh, so it's great. So then, you know, I was thinking that maybe what I should do is give away the code for the big app we've done, but I know from other SDKs that uh, we've used that it's best to get the simplest possible code out there so that people can understand how Mav SDK works uh, in conjunction with this. So you just see it's the simplest mission, it's going um, from the home point to the two waypoints, and then it's come back to land. I think it may have actually landed at this stage. <sighs> okay, and then if you look to see what happens here, uh, we're doing it headless because um, I don't really care if it's running JMAPSIM, although I will, how, if it's running the X11 application, but I will show you how to do that. So the major thing that you need to know to get this to communicate is that you need the IP address of the phone. So you go to the phone and say, tell me what the IP address is. Uh, make sure that you're on the same Wi-Fi and then use that Mavlink start command. And that's what causes the connection between my laptop and, um, and the Android app. Okay. All right. Um, there's Hittle as well. So that's hardware in the loop. Um, have used this quite a bit in the past, but mostly when we're just doing cube ground control, it's um, really easy to set up with an orange cube. So essentially what you have is the orange cube on one USB and then the other thing on the other side. Again, if you're running this in a Jenkins server, there's no reason why you couldn't have the two things sitting on a rack. Um, the, there is another really cool thing that's happened with Android Studio recently, although it's quite hard to use a Mav SDK, so you're, that you can uh, display the uh, physical device within the emulator with Android Studio, which means now you can see what's going on with the, with the phone. So if you're running any tests and running Jenkins, um, you can actually see what's happening on the phone. I would always try and run any Mav SDK code on a physical phone. I haven't had much success if I'm just running it out of an emulator. Okay, so what do we do to get there for, um, for my poor old intern who couldn't seem to figure it out? So um, first thing we want to do is all that we're running with Ubuntu is we're running X11. So X11 stands is um, uh, it's Linux's uh, win it's X Windows is what it used to be called. This thing has been around since I think the first time I was running X Windows application. Going to date myself now somewhere in the 90s. So it's been around forever. Um, you so essentially what you want to do is you install the Windows subsystem Linux. You want to make sure that you can run X11 apps. We just check to see if we can run X clock. Set up JMAPS in. Um, clone the Mav SDK example, which is and I got the uh, the link in the resources, and I'll show you how to change that too, so you can point it at PX4. Run JMAPS in. Run the Android client, and then if you're going to do Hittle, you can plug in the PX4 too as well. Um, so getting it running, WSL install from the command line. Um, one of the things I found that uh, wasn't that obvious uh, is that um, if you're running Intel or NVIDIA, you really have to update your graphics driver, otherwise the X11 stuff doesn't start showing up. The way that you know if it's gonna work is just install the most basic X11 app, so you su do sudo apt update, and then you're gonna do um, install Alexa X11 apps, and then to make sure that it's working, you get this X clock. So this thing has been around since the 80s, our little X clock here. And essentially that's what we're up to. So what is the code that I need to get there? Okay, so git clone, um, bash run Ubuntu, and then make sure that you're opening the inbound rules for UDP on port 14550, and then the outbound rules on TCP 4560. If you're not used to doing that, you basically go into the Windows Defender firewall, and then under the advanced settings, you can put create your uh, rules for inbound and outbound rules. Okay, um, now I need something to have my JMAPSIM. Now that I've got it running, I've got to get something that I want to 
point to that. So basically what I do is I clone the Mav SDK. That's the whole Mav SDK in Java. I'm using Java. And there's no reason why you couldn't use Swift. There's, um, wouldn't really be writing many C++ apps on Android, um, although you could with the NDK. But the easiest thing out of the, out of the box is Mav SDK Java. And then you just open the Android client and Android Studio. And what we want to do is, instead of pointing at the Mavlink server, we want to point it at um, that port 14550, which is where we were before. Pretty simple line of code. Um, in order to do that, uh, you basically just go into the, there's only two files. There's two activity files. Um, so you go into the, um, the one that has run Mav SDK server. And all that we're saying when this, the call is, Mav SDK server run, and then we just add um, the option to point it at that port. Uh, okay. So run, so make px4 sittle jmavsim, and then when it goes down, you saw in the headless one that we had to add, that we uh, had to point it, whatever the phone is. So you go into the phone, find out what the IP address is of the phone, and make sure that you're using um, the Mavlink start command. Run under client, and uh, off we go. So yeah, same as before. Uh, okay, oh, sh that's no, something happened there, sorry. Okay. Okay, and then just to show you that we did actually get JMabson working on the X11. So this is what the simulator looks like if you're running that little waypoint that I showed you before, um, just to show that it's taking off. This is very similar kind of look and feel that you get if you're using on um, the DJI world, or the, well, the Parrot world's got a lot better now because they have the, um, their new one has the Unreal Engine, which is very like the, uh, the uh, AirSim. Okay. And then if you're running on Mac, um, there is, uh, it's even easier to run on Mac. Basically, what you have, I added this yesterday because I saw one of the universities talk USC and they said some of the people had Macs, so I added this in here so that they know how to run Macs. Um, this one's running headless again, but again, it's kind of the, the same format to, to get it to work. You basically uh, just make sure that the Mavlink is pointing on the same network to the phone. Um, you may not have, in your framework, you may not have a, a Mav SDK app that you're trying to do, but the same thing will work with QGround control. Um, the next lecture I'm going to do is basically trying to get to show people the things that they have to run through to get QGround control up and running, um, because the next, that was the next thing that my intern was having a little bit of difficulty with. Okay, um, so to run Gazebo, um, we're basically on the same thing here, where we're basically make PX4 settle and it's uh, GZ underscore X500. Same again, um, and then Gazebo comes up. You might not like this version of Gazebo, so many of the people that, um, that work with us want to use the old version. So um, there is a way to get back to that. So within your WSL, you want to remove um, GZ Garden, install aptitude. Uh, the first thing that I found that wasn't in the documentation was you have to run the sudo apt auto remove after you run the app, after you install aptitude, or after you remove GZ Garden. Otherwise, the build's never going to work. Um, and then you follow the rest of the instructions that are in the documentation, the uh, the ones that you want to install, and then you get back to the Gazebo Classic, which is probably. Um, the uh, my simulator of choice. Um, okay, and then we have AirSim. So AirSim, um, which is a conversation before this, it's kind of, uh, is it Coliseum that's taking it over? Is that I think that's the successor. Yeah. Yep, so AirSim has kind of been um, end of life by uh, Microsoft, which is a shame really, because that works quite well on this, this whole system. There is uh, a, a fairly huge hole in the documentation, um, which is another thing that um, uh, the poor intern had a problem with trying to go. I feel like he had a black cloud following around the whole time. Every time he touched something, it would break, and it's like, come on, it can't be that hard. But unfortunately, there are issues with the documentation. So um, in this case, the way to get it working is you have two systems working. So you have obviously your WSL2 and you have your Windows 11. And what you want to make sure is that there's a connection between the two. So you just find out what the IP address is of Windows. And then you export that within the WSL to tell it where it's supposed to be looking. So um, 
In the documentation, there's a whole big thing about um, if you find the address of the WSL2 um, IP address and then you put that in the settings file, um, that's wrong. You actually use the IP address that you get from ipconfig and put it in the settings file. So we'd, there's a really good talk that was last year, um, if you want to find out more about AirSim um, and the kind of stuff that you can do with that. Um, but basically all we did was we didn't build it from scratch, we downloaded the binary, got it up and running, and it worked very similar to the uh, JMAVSIM and the gazebo, but we're just easier, to, uh, nicer to look at. So here's what the settings file is. Again, I have a link to the resources. Um, the local host IP was where the problem is here, that it wasn't working the way it's supposed to be. Okay, and then in this case, we're running the, uh, the same thing that I showed you in JMAPSIM with, the, um, with our MAV SDK client is running. In this case, as with most of the simulators, this one's running in Redmond and the last one was running in uh, Switzerland, I think. Okay, so this is the, the one slide that um, probably has everything for uh, the newbies who are getting into this. Um, of all the things that I came across, so basically what I did is I reset my machine, started from scratch. I had to update the graphics driver for X11, so updates the Intel graphics driver, NVIDIA, depending on what machine it was. Um, uh, for some reason, their firewall settings seemed to be something that was quite hard for people to do. The, there was uh, an issue, um, especially on a new machine when you're running WSL2, that the clocks between WSL2 and the um, Windows box were not aligned. Um, so every time that you try to run that bash script, uh, bash ubuntu.sh, the Ubuntu shell script, it would fail with, say, try back in 11 hours. And the reason for that was that the clocks were basically out of sync. So if you run sudo hw clock and it'll uh, synchronize the two of them, away you go. Um, Mavlink start. Make sure that you're pointing it at it. Um, Android Studio Eel, so always use something from Eel all the way up to whatever we are now, I think it's Giraffe, um, because that gives you the ability to actually see what's going on with the physical device. And that becomes important because if you want to run any tests, or especially if you're running espresso tests, um, you want to make sure that you're running the physical device so you can do that um, recording that I'll show you in a second that you can do within Android Studio. The sudo apt auto remove. Um, and then AirSim, if you're doing it from scratch, you need to just install the C++ and DirectX runtimes. Ignore the IP address show because you don't need it. So, um, okay, so now we have all of our simulators set up. Um, now what I want to do is just get to kind of a modern um, mobile development environment. So we're running Jenkins here. Um, pretty easy to set up, uh, whatever, regardless of whatever platform you're running in. Um, so you just create your app. In this case, it's just simple Android sim, um, Android test. So we have three steps that we need to do. We want to start JMAPSIM before we do the build. We want to build the APK, and then we want to run the espresso tests. There's a couple of hoops that we have to run through for JMAPSIM because I installed Jenkins on the Windows side. Um, you could install it within WSL, which might make more sense, but I was already started, so I said I'd continue anyway. So essentially what happens is, if you, you can run any um, WSL command from the CMD command line, but it's running in the wrong context. So it's in the Windows 11 context, it's not in the WSL2 context. So essentially what you have to do is you have to have a script, so you just create a simple Jenkins script, which runs the same make px4 sittl jmapsim, and then the other thing that we had to do is uh, you, the, I have to have that mavlink start command, and that's not something that I can inject after the fact, so the easiest way to do that was to just edit the px4 or c mavlink command, um, and you can also put in a flag if you want to, to just pull in whatever is the, whatever flag that you've identified as the IP address. Okay, so now we have... So um, creating, I always find that when you're in Jenkins, nine times out of 10 if you're using it, don't use the plugins if you can get away with it. Try and make sure that you're doing it from the command line because it's much easier to debug it from the command line than it is if you're using a plugin. Um, a plugins get out of date real quick. Uh, so if I'm running it, so what I'm doing is, the first thing I'm just, just doing is running my little Jenkins script. Um, if I wanna build the APK, I do actually use the plugin here because it's pretty tried and tested. Um, if you, uh, you can also run um, 
build from the command line too as well. You just basically run Gradle W build, and then that will build the whole thing. Um, it's actually, it's a great way to test to see if you've got the right SDKs and the right um, versions of Android on your machine before you can do this. Uh, so then the last thing that I want to do is I want to do some testing. So normally I'd write a bunch of unit tests, but because I'm using somebody else's code and it's just two activities, you don't really write unit tests and activities. You write it in other classes. So the easiest thing to do is to run Espresso. Has anybody ever used Espresso? Espresso is cool. It's like, um, and there's the same thing on iOS. You've got uh, XCUI. So it allows you to do, to, it's another language to write GUI tests. Um, but it kind of leads you down a path of, hey, this is super easy because they have a nice little tool that allows you to um, walk through what your app is doing and then it generates the code for you. So because it generates the code for you, um, you think this, hey, I don't need testers anymore. But unfortunately, um, if you're using Mapbox or if you're using anything else that's kind of not standard native Android widgets, it starts to get a bit complicated and then you need to learn how to use the Espresso language, which is um, a whole different topic. But to get started, especially because we got activities, this is super cool. And then the way that you run that is you basically have, um, you have to use the um, connected check, which will then run that. And then if you're, so the, in Android, you've got the, the main code, uh, which is where all your source code codes. You've got a thing called Android test, which is where all the generated espresso tests go. And then you just have test, which is where the unit tests go. Um, so if you do connected check, it's going to do the Android tests. If you do um, test, if you go test, it's just going to do the unit tests itself. Okay, and then here's just a bunch of resources. So where I found out to uh, the necessity to involve uh, to add the the uh, Intel driver, the Map SDK example that we used. That's our white label GCS, kind of like a minimal replacement for Q ground control. Um, the Mac um, link and uh, obviously the docs for the simulation. And then I did want to add just uh, a thank you to the drone meetup. Um, they gave me some great feedback on stuff that they thought I should add. Uh, so I added it before I did the talk. So we did like a dry one last month. Next month, we'll be doing, um, we've been doing this about 18 months now. If anybody wants to talk, you're more than welcome. Um, I'm fed up hearing the sound of my own voice. Uh, but if you were doing the same thing as here as just setting up Q ground control next month, and then probably the month after that, we'll do an ATAC plugin, but we've done stuff on remote ID. We've done stuff on Mav SDK, so we'll probably get deeper and deeper into this stuff as we get along. Okay, and that's it. Any questions? Yep. And so, but I see a lot of times people say, oh, I tune everything from Gazebo and transfer it to the ground. It doesn't work. I think it's mainly because the, the, some of the physics is wrong. So, how do we just really fix that? Um, well, at its most basic, uh, I would always have somebody test it in real life and try and get it. Obviously, it's easier in my world because the drone's already built. So I'm not building the drone, I'm creating a mobile app that uses somebody else's drone. So if, the, if we're not making any stupid mistakes, then, you know, it's, and the manufacturer's doing what they're supposed to be doing, then that's right. That will work out well. Um, I have heard people say that, like, various different, you know, if you, you know, if you use AirSim, that it has options that you can use for kind of wind. And uh, I think we're all faking it, though, to be, you know, just to answer your question, I think we are to a yeah. general extent. <laughs> Uh, well, the, so, the, the so, the, so the question was um, for the video, um, how do we fix Gazebo because it doesn't have real work conditions? Um, but if you have the data, I have interns, so I'd be more than happy to use that as a, as a way to give something back. So yeah, we should hook up afterwards. Anything else? Yep.
Well, they all do, um, well, they, they say they do. I don't know how good the physics are. You're telling me that's not. But there's, uh, in J Mabson, I can't remember it's J Mabson, but if you go through the simulator list um, on the docs, there's definitely VTOL options. So I would just try that first. I have no idea how the, um, how the physics work. Um, I'm in the lovely world of, I just want to run my CI CD server and make sure that all my tests run. And then somebody else is taking care of the, the harder stuff. Yeah, we're, uh, we're not Mac Eng, we're more computer science. Bye, it's fun, okay. Anything else? Sure. Uh, the integration is always interesting. Yeah, well, so if, if you're like if you're especially if you're using uh, a here link or a UX UVF, is that the other one? What's the other one? Um, yeah. So there's always there's layers of complexity that um, these simulators will will never get. And then it's the configuration of um, oh we're using a camera and then you're trying to do the camera too as well. So because of this world that we're in, I think there's always going to be that. Um, that extra layer of complexity that the simulators won't get you. Um, but what I, what I was trying to do here is, we're, I'm not even at that stage. I had like a junior developer who, you know, this is our pipeline of who our next employees are. And he can't even get past installing JMAPSIM. So really, so the, I think that's like, this is the 101 class. I need to get to the 401 class to get to where you're at. But I'll get there. Okay. Thanks, guys.